say, argue uh, uh, another point that gets um, a lot of pushback, although, well, it's a controversial point. I'm going to argue that instead of guilt or shame, white people need to love themselves, love their whiteness enough to transform it. And this is going to look selfish, because usually what we think white people should do if they're trying to help end racial inequality is go focus on people of color, go help them or go contribute to some cause, or go work in some way. And so you direct, you direct yourself to people of color, not to white people. And I'm saying there needs to be a focus, white people focusing on themselves in some way. And this is going to be selfish in the sense of trying to do some self-examination, some work um, that can transform what whiteness might be, what it, mean, what it might mean to live it, to try and create one of those different options. I was talking about a third option, something that's not the good white person or the bad racist person. So uh, briefly, um, James Baldwin in The Fire Next Time has a wonderful quote here about this kind of love. This is not a love that means white people pat themselves on the back, like, oh, I just, you know, whew. Don't have to, I'm just self-congratulatory self or something. It's a critical love. It's a love that I'm thinking of that's happening. I really do come back to thinking about family members. What does it mean to love my white children, my white parents, my white family enough to say, you know what? what how, how can we live our whiteness differently? What does it mean to do this, to, to recognize it, to talk about it, to have some difficult conversations? that are going to um, tackle a number of difficult topics, it's so much easier just to take the route of uh, don't see it, don't talk about it. So it's, 